Hello guys and well, welcome to another little video here from the Copenhagen Swarplus Workshop. Tonight is Monday, the 7th of August, and we are finishing up on the last few bits before Nexo 2 launch. So as you can see here behind, Mask is uh, talking to Vostok. Vostok is out somewhere in the, uh, in the uh, ocean right now. So we're doing a, a long range telemetry test or a long range radio test. So, uh, so we're testing out the, uh, the radio systems between Vostok and, uh, and here at the workshop. So during launch we need to, uh, video traffic is relayed back here to, uh, to MASK uh, to, uh, to be broadcast out to you. And so that's what uh, Vostok is out training right now and see how the, the system works. Here tonight we are trying to do a long distance test of the transmission network. We are trying to test some uh, cameras um, that are working sort of today, but not very well. Uh, the purpose of tonight's test is to see if we can actually stream well without too many interruptions. And now I have to go for the radio. Mads, can you come? Det burde jeg ikke gøre. Det er sikkert nogle uh, penge til nogle IP-adresser. Welcome on board uh, Vostok. We are now doing the long distance test what we tried doing uh, about a fortnight ago. We had some serious problems with the weather last time. It was just quite literally too bad. We are testing the, the Wi-Fi link we use to send the stream from, uh, from our test area to, uh, in, to, to a high tower at land. The connection is approximately 30 kilometers, and that's what we're trying to achieve today. So the whole plan has been to mount an antenna on uh, the high building we have next to our workshop. It is 70 meters high, and it's the same height as the, uh, the Von Holmer tower we're using to have all our antennas in Von Holmer. So what we're doing is basically just taking 30 kilometers plus up to the Danish Øresund, uh, which means that we are going more or less close to Elsinore. Maybe someone knows that from the Hamlet Adventures, but that's where we're going. So we are now about 26 kilometers out. We have a fixed bandwidth of 30 megabit full duplex. That means we have 30 megabit each way. That is more than sufficient to actually do a live stream from at least three cameras at the same time. So what we're trying to do now is basically testing the whole streaming setup. We have the streaming server in its rack. We have the antenna running and we're just having two cameras set up to actually deliver some data and testing that everything works out. It seems that this is not as important as actually getting the rocket to fly, but basically we are living from the public relations and the good content that we deliver to people. So the possibility to actually stream while being about 30 kilometers from land is just one of the best things we have ever done. In 2010 we couldn't do it and it was a little bit of uh, difficult to tell people what was actually happening and on that we built up the Copenhagen Suborbital support team and the stream team which means that today we are actually able to, to, uh, to film from we are actually able to send from up to 8 to 10 mobile cameras on both Sputnik and Vostok and transmit the whole rocket launch including cameras in the rocket from Vostok to land and give you, the viewers, pretty much the best seat you can ever get. Så 
So this is the nose cone for uh, for Nexo 2. It hasn't been painted yet, but otherwise it is uh, it's basically ready. So we have inside the nose cone we have uh, a balut, and then we have uh, actually there's a small parachute for the nose cone itself. The nose cone is a bit time consuming to make, so so it has its own parachute to land it safely. And uh, also at the uh, at the top of the nose cone, so uh, right about here, there are two gas generators, and uh, when those two gas generators are uh, are fired, it will uh, push out the uh, the balut, which uh, currently sits in here. And then down in the, the compartment down here, we will then have the parachute that will be pulled out uh, later in the process. One thing we're doing different this year is that we're going to, uh, to track the wind speed at high altitudes prior to launch. So for this we use a weather balloon, so we have developed the, the payload for this weather balloon ourselves. It's essentially a, a small a, a GPS unit that broadcasts a signal down to us, so we know the, the position of the GPS unit at all times while the uh, balloon is carrying it up. So uh, the, this balloon will uh, burst at about uh, 20 kilometers altitude, maybe a bit less. So from, uh, from ground up, we'll get uh, a wind profile that we can then uh, use to, uh, to determine how far the, uh, the rocket will, will float in air uh, when it's landing in its parachute. On the electronics front, we have um, just uh, the yesterday we have completed our uh, charging uh, box for the batteries on board the, the rocket. The uh, charging box is this one, which uh, we, we have a little firmware issue that we would like to add later, but uh, it's, it's more or less uh, finished this one. And we also have uh, finished our radios. Uh, this is the CPU uh, part of one of the radios. It's in one of the boxes that we have milled ourselves. Uh, you have seen a, probably seen a video of that earlier. Uh, and next up is uh, the GNC, the Guidance and Navigation Computer, which is to be uh, integrated into the system this coming weekend. Uh, and then we will uh, proceed with testing the, the complete system in a, a so-called integration test. Uh, which we hopefully will uh, will conduct this weekend, where we will uh, include both uh, the guidance and navigation computer, the um, charging uh, part of the of the avi avionics, the GPS receiver, and also the tele telemetry and uh, telecommand uh, radios. So everything will be um, controlled by radio and uh, tested for uh, functionality. So Nexu 2 is uh, all in all about one and a half meter longer than Nexu 1 was. So a very uh, practical uh, problem with that is that we have been a uh, it has been necessary to uh, make the uh, the rail longer. So this is our transport rail that we roll Nexu 2 around on. And we also use it on uh, on Sputnik when we put it on board. Uh, and as you can see, we've uh, we've had to make it uh, quite a bit longer. For some of the electronics on board Nexo 2, we're making our own uh, custom-made electronics uh, housings. So what we're doing right now is the, the very last box that goes on the Nexo 2 rocket. This uh, box will house the, uh, the video transmitters. Uh, and uh, so this is the uh, box that will actually sit in and this is the uh, lid that will go on top. And then it bolts on to, uh, to just below the, uh, the nose cone. So um, the sun is setting here over Öresund, the weather is beautiful, we have about half a meter of waves. This is pretty much the same that you would see on a normal day when we were doing, uh, when we, if we were doing the launch. So um, from the Vordek on Vostok, I will say thank you and um, thank you for your support.